Okay, so the second type of dynamic force is lift. So we talked about drag, which is in the horizontal direction, right? Opposing the forward motion or the backward motion, what have you. And then there's lift. And lift we think about as pulling something up, but lift can also be directed down, all right? It's just perpendicular to the relative object of the motion. And here is the equation for lift. And so again, we'll go through all the features that affect lift. It all has to do with Bernoulli's principle. Faster moving fluids exert less pressure than slower moving fluids. So if you have fluids, as we saw over here, you know, fluids on the bottom of the um, airfoil and fluids on the, bot the top, the faster moving fluids will exert less pressure, and so there's kind of a battle, some pushing down, some pushing up, and you want the ones pushing up, obviously for an airplane, to win. Fluids on a curved surface are moving faster than on the straight surface. So these are two things that you need to keep in mind for Bernoulli's principle. And let's look at them. So here we have the blue fluid particle and the red one. So the red goes less of a distance than the blue because it's curved, but they start and stop at the exact same time. So if you go the same time but go a longer distance, you have gone faster. If you are moving faster, then you are exerting less pressure on this airfoil. And so the top will have less pressure than the bottom, and so the airplane wing will lift. So here we see um, kind of conceptually using resolution of vectors, right? So we have a, a vector force, part of it acts down, pressure down, part of it acts forward. Part of it acts down, part forward, part down, part forward, down, etc. Right? So because of this curved surface, you get this resolution vector that basically decreases the vertical component of the pressure of these molecules. But if you look at the bottom of the surface, it's straight, so all of the pressure is acting straight up. So you're going to have a higher pressure down here, lower pressure on the airfoil, or the top of the airfoil. And we also see this in cars, right, race cars, but instead of trying to lift up, these spoilers are trying to keep the cars on the road, not too much on the road to increase friction, but to basically engage the tires on the road because now these cars are really, really light. And even many of your cars may have spoilers or like kind of fake spoilers on the back because cars have gotten so light because they've gone from being made of steel now to basically fiberglass. Another factor in this uh, lift force is surface area. So if you look at ski jumping, right, I'm sure you guys have all seen it, this is probably what it looks like for you guys to watch it, but back in the day this is what ski jumpers look like. They tried to keep their ski blades, or their skis parallel, right, and get their body as close to the blades to get this aerodynamic um, positioning and then you know they competed and then one day somebody said well I'm gonna split my skis whether on purpose or by accident and all of a sudden they went significantly farther for their jump and the reason was due to surface area here the two skis parallel have a surface area that's fairly small compared to the surface area of the of the veed skis with the body in the center you get 30% more lift, right? If you can keep, stay in the air longer, you will jump farther. Another thing that Bernoulli's um, principle does is it deals with curving the ball, top spin, back spin, that you guys are probably aware of in many of your sports. So let's look at how this works. Here's the air, here's the ball, and we are throwing the ball into the airflow. All right, so the ball is going to the left, the air particles are going to the right. So if we put a spin on this ball, right, rotate it posteriorly, or I guess clockwise, let's look at the relative velocity on the top of the ball and on the bottom of the ball. And what I like to do is pretend that I'm standing on the ball, I'm a mini, mini me standing on the ball, and I'm going to feel what the velocity feels like. 
So as the air goes through and I'm standing and I'm facing the direction of my spin, this basically feels like a tail wind, right? So it's, it's pushing me, it's helping me um, in my velocity. So the spin is making me go to velocity in, in the, to the right. The air is going to the right, so it is a tailwind. As I rotate and I'm going in the direction of the ball, right, because I'm standing on the top of the ball, now this airflow is hitting me in the face. So it is slowing me down. So basically the relative velocity is much greater. So my velocity and the air are going in the same direction. So you have a relative velocity that's high. And down here, I'm going in the opposite direction of the airflow. And so the velocity is low. And if you remember back to Bernoulli's principle, higher velocities leads to less pressure. And so the ball will go in the direction of the least pressure. And so that will fly up. So it will have a longer hang time, if you will. So you can compare the, the lifts of the different rotations. As we said, the airflow is coming to the right. If you put a clockwise spin on it, it will lift up for reasons that we just discussed in the previous slide. If you reverse that spin, so now on the top, my velocity is going to the left, opposing the air. So this is the slower velocity. This side of the ball has a higher velocity. It will drop down. And I have a few more directions, so you need to make sure you're, you're aware of which way the airflow is going, which way the ball is spinning, and the ball direction to figure out the lift, for, the lift force. And this is kind of the bend it like Beckham, right? So it can be top spin and back spin. You know, so golfers usually put a back spin, and it, it keeps the ball in the air longer. Tennis players try to drop it down right over the net. Soccer players try to bend it around the defenders, so put a curve in the kind of the, um, I guess, medial lateral plane. Um, this is also called the Magnus effect. So obviously pitchers do it all the time, and it gets very complicated because they'll kind of put off-axis spins on things. So the key is that you're looking at the relative velocity on different sides of the ball. With low velocities, there's going to be a higher pressure. With higher velocities, lower pressure. And the ball will curve in the direction of the lower pressure. Final concept, buoyancy, final force. Which is heavier, beach ball or a tennis ball? I'm sure you said tennis ball. Probably feels a lot heavier. Which has more volume? Hopefully you said beach ball. I'm assuming this is a, a big beach ball. And now the final question is, which is more buoyant? And again, it is the beach ball. Because the, it's, the, it has a higher buoyant force because the magnitude of the buoyant force is due to the volume displaced. And so before we get into that, just think intuitively. If I push down on the beach ball, or I, put, I try to submerge a tennis ball, which is easier to submerge? The tennis ball, because it has a lower buoyancy force. And remember, buoyancy always acts up, so it's opposing you pushing it down into the water. Okay, it does have something to do with density. The density of water is 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. Air is 1.2 kilograms per meter cubed. Muscle and bone are greater than the density of water and will sink. But we can float because we have other cavities and body fat that are filled with air or fat is also a, a lower density than water, right? And if you think about floating, typically if you just lie there and try to float, you will rotate and your head will go up and your lower limbs will be submerged because your lower limbs tend to be more muscle and bone and your lung cavity tends to, is obviously in your upper body and it will quote, float more than your lower body. Another example is why do helium balloons float? Well, if they're going to float, they must have a density that is less than air.
and they do. And I think the, the density, I'm not sure what the density of helium is, but it is lower than air, and that is why it will float. And so you see little kids that see a helium balloon, and it's amazing, and then they'll try to blow up the balloon or ask you to blow up the balloon. And then if you blow it up without helium, and you blow it up with air, it won't float because the densities are equal. So it's kind of a, a depressing thing for little kids. But let's look um, more into buoyancy. It always pushes up, right? It, as I said, gravity pushes down, buoyancy always pushes up, and the magnitude of this force is equal to the volume of the fluid displaced by the object. So that is why a large beach ball would be, have a much higher buoyant force than a tennis ball because it has a large volume. So think of it, if you filled that beach ball with water, it would be heavier than filling the tennis ball with water. 